Well, the Dallas Stars came out of Sunday with a win over the Buffalo Sabres. And on today's show, we'll be talking about that win. Talk about the grittiness and determination that the Stars showed and why that's important. Talk about the special teams and how there's a little bit more of a positive spin this time around. And then we'll close out the show by giving you a weekly outlook on what the Stars need for good playoff positioning. All of this coming up on a Monday edition of Locked on Stars. Your Locked On Stars, your daily podcast on the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Howdy, Stars fans. Welcome back to the Locked On Stars podcast, the only daily podcast covering the Dallas Stars. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Dane Lewis, your local expert on all things Dallas Stars hockey, credentialed member of the media, coming to you on this Monday, February 28th. And today's episode of Locked on Stars is brought to you by Bet Bet BetOnline has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. Well, whether this is your first time here or you are a recurring listener, I do appreciate you stopping by today's episode of Locked on Stars for making us your first listen of this Monday. Be sure to subscribe to and follow the Locked on Stars podcast. If you do not do so already, we are free and available no matter where you listen to podcasts at, whether that's on Spotify, Apple, Google, or on YouTube as well. Be sure to check us out. Uh, the video version of the podcast on YouTube. Do appreciate all the subscriptions, follows, likes, comments, what have you. But without any further hesitation, let's get right down to business. Talking about yesterday's win that the Dallas Stars got over the Eastern Conference Buffalo Sabres, the second and final meeting between these two teams this season. The Stars getting a win uh, about a month ago back in Buffalo to start out that four-game road trip uh, and where they won all four of those games, getting a full Eight points, but the Dallas Stars able to carry that over, I guess, a month later and get a win in their own building against the team in blue, yellow, and white. And this is just a really great win for this team. I feel like we haven't been able to say this too often in a lot of Stars wins, but really just about everyone found a way to contribute to yesterday's win. 11 different players on the Stars roster recorded a point. Michael Roffle, one of those, if not the premier player yesterday, he certainly gets my star of the game. Uh, You guys know how much I love Michael Roffle, especially this season. And he hasn't really done too much on the score sheet. He's been kind of a quieter guy, a great penalty killer, great presence on the ice as far as just checking and, uh, you know, making good passes. He's certainly been on the you know, the, the front end of some really great passing and scoring plays that the Stars have this season. But he's able to score two goals this game. And Roddick Fox gets involved on the first goal. Nice to see him get a point. He really played his tail off in that Nashville game to close out last week. Really wanted him to get a point there and help the Stars get on the board and maybe come out of that game with two points. Didn't happen, but he's able to get on the board this week, or at least the score sheet uh, takes a nice shot in the first period. It looks like maybe he gets credited for the goal, but then after replay, you do see that Michael Roffle does get a piece of it. But nonetheless, I'm sure Roddick is also just excited to have his name on the score sheet as well, just as much as us watching him. Uh, we're excited for him also. But Michael Roffle, uh, you know, he I, I don't know if he credits uh, his success yesterday to his haircut, but I know that there was some talk after the game in his post game presser that Uh, You know, he got a buzz cut. He had a little bit of a flow going, not too long of hair, but definitely had uh, some hair on his head. But now it's pretty much all gone and his teammates messing with him at the start of the game right before warmups, hiding his helmet uh, to where he couldn't find it. He had to go out uh, in warmups with the rest of the team with no helmet on to display his new fresh shaven head to the world. But maybe the new haircut is the sauce for Michael Roffle as he got two goals yesterday, Miro Haskin and also assisting on that first goal. Good to see Miro get on the score sheet as well. But big stuff for Michael Roffle. Always good when you can get even one goal from your third or fourth line, but to get two goals from a guy on one of your bottom six lines, that is absolutely fantastic and a huge reason why the Dallas Stars came out on top yesterday over Buffalo. But that was not it. Several other guys contributed. Like I said, Essel and Dell gets a point off an assist. Teaming up with Dennis Gurionov, who had one of the nicer deflection goals you'll see this season across the league, but especially from the Dallas Stars. Uh, kind of a, an open slot area really only Dennis Gurion off there but he makes a really nice play with his stick while the puck is in midair and you know the the Buffalo goalie just never really saw the adjustment coming really really good stuff there from Dennis Uh, that's a nice part of his game that we haven't seen too much of the season he's normally going to burn you with his speed and take the puck to the net himself but 
Yeah, he's able to use his positioning and his stick to help uh, Esselin Dell record a point via an assist. Another guy that uh, both of those guys kind of don't always find themselves on the score sheet very often, especially defensemen this season. Good for Essa. Good for Dennis to record another goal. And overall, I mean, in this game, it felt like Dallas had a pretty comfortable lead, even when they weren't really leading when it was zero to zero. It felt like Dallas was in control. They had the early shot on goal count in their favor. I do believe the game ended with more shots in Buffalo's favor, but that's because they came out swinging in the third period, but were stopped by a brick wall named Jake Ottinger, who we'll talk about in just a second. But, you know, Buffalo did challenge it sometimes in this game. You know, there were some moments where, you know, they scored some goals or had a little bit of momentum swinging in their favor. But this was almost kind of one of those games where, you know, the a dad is playing with their child, their son or their daughter. And, you know, they're they're playing some kind of game and, you know, they start out in the lead. But then they they let their, you know, their child kind of climb back into it, whether this is a board game or some other kind of activity, what have you. But then and you know, the kid's like, oh, I have a chance. I have a chance. But then, you know, the dad just kind of flexes his strength again and, and comes out on top, which he should because. Uh, he's been in control this whole time and knows what he's doing. Not to say the Dallas Stars were letting Buffalo get back in this game, but it was just kind of one of those things where I at least felt like Dallas was in control. And, you know, the goals they did allow, Tage Thompson leads the team Buffalo in points. He's going to be a really good player, has a lot of potential, a young guy that I think could potentially be a staple for the Sabres team for quite some time. Certainly, you know, it, it just almost seems inevitable that he's going to get a point. He's been nearly a point a game guy this season for Buffalo. Cody Eakin uh, in the third period, kind of a good effort play. The puck bouncing around the crease a little bit. Jake Ottinger just missing out on covering the puck up. But still, Dallas up 4-1 to one at that point. Not a whole lot of time left in the third period. But they're able to come together and keep Buffalo out of the net for the remainder of the game. And a big part of that was because of Jake Ottinger, who recorded 38 saves on 40 shots on goal. And per Brian Ray, who is one of the hosts of Stars Live pregame on Valley Sports, Jake Ottinger in his last 10 starts has gone 7-2-1 and one with a 1.86, yes, 1.86 goals against average and a 9-3-9 save percentage. And that is fantastic. Obviously, a lot of that goes back into last week whenever he was awarded one of the NHL's Stars of the Week, getting the third star of the week. But the momentum did not stop there for Jake Ottinger. He continues to show why he deserves to be the number one goalie right now and why he deserves to be the number one goalie for the foreseeable future and for a long time to come for this Dallas Stars organization. And today was a great day for him because his offense was contributing. Uh, you know, it's nice whenever Jake Ottinger can get 30 plus saves in a game and, you know, only allow two goals, but it also is beneficial when his offense can put up three plus goals on their end. Uh, it takes a little bit of the stress off Otter, uh, who now has his own merch, as I'm sure many of you saw on social media over the weekend. Really interesting, very basic, uh, minimalist kind of design, but uh, super, super good stuff there. And uh, really encouraging to continue to see Jake Ottinger build off of all this momentum he's gotten really ever since that trip to Florida back in January, whenever he had a little bit of a rough outing against the Panthers. It's almost like that was a wake up call for Jake. And now he's just playing lights out. And if he had been putting up these numbers since the beginning of the season and beginning a lot more starts where taking the place of Holtzby and Hugh Dobin, I think that there's a legitimate case that you could throw his name in the Vesna conversation. He does not deserve to be there right now. I think that that is uh, Shesterkin's trophy to win, and he will win it this season. But, I mean, this is just promising going forward. I, I have no doubt that if Jake Ottinger can stay healthy and continue to put up this kind of production, that he will find himself in the conversation for a Vesna trophy at some point in his career. Today's episode is brought to you by Built Bar. Built Bars are covered in 100% chocolate. 100% real chocolate. All Built Bars are covered in that. They're low calorie, high protein. You can replace your candy bars with Built Bars. They're better for you. A typical candy bar can be anywhere from 200 to 300 calories. You can go to Built.com right now and scroll down to the macros chart and you'll be blown away at how good they are for you. High protein, low calorie, high in fiber, and low carb. Most Built Bars contain 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar, 4 net carbs, and 17 grams of protein. Compare that to a normal candy bar, which can usually have around 240 calories, 30 grams of sugar, and dozens of net carbs. Go to Built.com right now and use promo code LOCKED15 to get 15% off your order. Again, use promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off your order at Built.com. Jumping back into today's episode of Locked on Stars, your first listen of the day. Your host, Dane Lewis, here at Dane Double underscore Lewis on Twitter. Be sure to give me a follow there, as well as the show at Locked on Stars. Continuing to talk about 
yesterday's win uh, four to two, the Dallas Stars over the Buffalo Sabres. The special teams, uh, pretty good stuff from them. Not a whole lot of penalty minutes in this game, only eight combined between each team. So power play opportunities were spread pretty thin amongst both squads on the ice on Sunday at the AAC. The Stars, only one penalty, though. Jacob Peterson gets called for holding, I believe, in the second period. Um, you know, no, nothing too detrimental there. Peterson, not really a penalty-killing player. And obviously, the Stars did not allow a goal there. Um, but the Stars did execute on the power play, though, which I feel like we have not been able to say in a long time. They went one for three on the power play on Sunday against the Sabres. So only picking up three opportunities to go on the power play. That's probably also a little bit uh, of, you know, you can contribute some of that to Buffalo playing disciplined and not allowing themselves to be in the penalty box as much. But also good to see the Stars actually get a power play goal on the board, even if it was in the last five seconds of, I believe, their last power play of the game. That Dennis Gurionov tip goal from Esther Lindell being the goal that goes in on the man advantage for Dallas. And it's small. But it is a step in the right direction. I feel like in the past several games, whether it's the Winnipeg game, Nashville game, what have you, we would have been we would have killed to, to see the Stars go 30 percent, 33 percent on the power play uh, or at least getting the looks that they were getting on some of those power plays like we saw yesterday. So it's a step in the right direction. I mean, we're not out of the woods yet as far as getting that Stars power play back to where it was uh, even, you know, just a few weeks ago, whenever it was high powered and seemingly unstoppable but again to touch on the pk they continue to be lights out ever since the return from the all-star break they did have a perfect day but again only one penalty drawn by or only one penalty recorded for the dallas stars again jacob peterson called for holding so they really only had to be on the man disadvantage for two minutes in total but it's absolutely huge that dallas is able to stay out of the box in this game that's something that you must do against these bad teams like buffalo we saw it even a little bit on that road trip out east last month or a little less than a month ago, and, and we're going to need to continue to see it more uh, because you have some bad teams coming up down the stretch, whether that's Montreal and New York. I believe that that's a back-to-back. -back. Also on the road, uh, you throw in some other good opponents on the road there as well. I think Toronto and Washington, but still Montreal and New York, definitely not playoff teams this season, although Montreal starting to turn it on a little bit ever since the hiring of their new coach. And Cole Caulfield has found new life uh, within that lineup, but I digress there. We'll talk about that when we get to that matchup. But Staying out of the box against bad teams is absolutely essential for any team that wants to be in the playoffs because not being in the penalty box allows you to dictate the pace of a hockey game. And especially if you can get the other team to draw a bunch of penalties, again, Buffalo only drawing three in this game. So not a whole lot to write home there about. But still, I think that that plays to Dallas's advantage. Whenever you don't have to worry about having any of your players in the penalty box, it allows you to put out the lineups you want to put out when you want to put them out. And you can dictate the force. Uh, the pace and you know you can force the issue uh, on the ice and so it really allows you to dictate the pace of the game and play the game on your terms which I think is when the Dallas Stars and most hockey teams are at their best whenever they're able to play the game how they want to and how they are most comfortable and how they see fit so they need to make a habit of winning these kinds of games down the stretch this season I mean again the special teams and even the five on five looks pretty good and again, Buffalo, inferior competition at home. On paper, this is a game that the Stars should have won, but we've seen them drop several home games this year to teams that they should have beaten, whether it's Ottawa, Montreal, you name it. Uh, we've seen it before, but good to see the Stars finally get that win against a bad team at home and on a Sunday, nonetheless. They now have two wins on Sunday this season. I think now their Sunday record is 2-5, and five, uh, and that's also an afternoon game. The Stars, uh, it's pretty much a bad mixture whenever they play the afternoon and on a Sunday has not gone well for them historically this season uh, but maybe starting to get back on the right track don't know off the top of my head how many more Sunday games we have this season but I'm sure we'll see a few more and so good to know that the Stars can win on a Sunday it's been a long time since we've seen them do that and they get the win in solidarity not really a doubt about it and the special teams starting to turn some heads the penalty kill really becoming a threat for this Dallas Stars team I mean if you're an opposing team and you go on the power play you really need to dial in and, and design your game plan to attack uh, this four-man unit for the Dallas Stars because they seem almost unstoppable right now. And I think also you have to give a ton of credit to Jake Ottinger as well, almost playing as that fifth skater, uh, but obviously in the crease as the goalie. But the power play, if they can really get back to form and what they were doing earlier this season, the Stars can really take that next step and continue to climb in the playoff rankings, which we're going to talk about after we take a quick break and hear from some of our sponsors. <laughs> Today's episode is also brought to you by betonline.net. 
Football season might be over, but basketball is in full swing for both pro and college shooters. From the latest odds, totals, player performance props to where the next fired coach is going to land, BetOnline.net is the number one spot for all your sports betting needs. BetOnline remains the best spot for all your sports scores, podcasts, news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline.net is your source for hockey, boxing, and UFC odds. Head to the website today and use your mobile device to learn more about the trends and action. BetOnline.net, where the game starts. And closing out today's episode of Locked on Stars, your first listen of the day. Going to take a minute and talk about the standings as they present themselves right now. I was about to say as they stand right now, but that didn't, did not feel right coming off the tongue. Uh, but I digress there. The Stars currently possess the second wild card spot in the Western Conference, which is fantastic. It's a great feeling to have, even though, as we know from the past few weeks, that second wild card spot can be fleeting and you can hold it one day and then find yourselves two spots out of it. Uh, the next without even playing a game uh, just depends on how the cookie crumbles and how the dominoes fall. If you will, Edmonton and Anaheim are actually tied with Dallas and points at 61, but Dallas has games in hand. They have one game in hand over one of those teams and two over the other. Don't remember off the top of my head, which one, but Edmonton and Anaheim still very much in the playoff race. I feel like Anaheim is starting to digress just a little bit. Uh, and I predict that we will see them fall out of that position. Over the coming weeks, kind of like Winnipeg and San Jose, where they were up there in the conversation, I think that they'll maybe slip and kind of come back down to earth. That, that's just my prediction. I've been wrong on a lot of predictions this season. But if you have to say which of those teams is going to be a threat to the Stars long term for the rest of the season, I think the Oilers have a much better chance to do that. Anaheim has a great team. They're a good team. They have a lot of young talent. But I think that they're still a year or two away from being a legit playoff and maybe even cup contender. Uh, it seems like Trevor Zegers is, is you know, uh, almost a shoe in to win uh, the Calder Trophy this season. I would be surprised if it wasn't him. I guess it could be one of the kids out of Detroit as well. But I think Zegers just has that pizzazz and pop factor, <laughs> if you will. But again, those two teams still very much in the race for playoff positioning. Vancouver, not too far out themselves. And it sounds crazy, but I mean, the Stars have 61 points right now. And they're not too far behind some other teams in their division. Uh, they could really, you know, find themselves in one of the top three spots within the division uh, if they do things just right. They're only three points behind the Predators, who hold the first wild card spot at 64 points, and they're only four points behind the Minnesota Wild. So they're not really too far out in all reality from being in a top three spot within the division, which would be, you know, better than a wild card spot. Get a little bit better seeding, maybe get a more favorable matchup in the first round of the playoffs where you're not having to play a one seed, which is Colorado or whatever team is going to come out of that Pacific division, whether it's Calgary, Vegas, LA, or maybe even Edmonton or Anaheim. I mean, if one of them wants to become world beaters and pop out of the bottom of, of the, the basement of that division as well. Uh, things are really, really chaotic out West, especially in the Pacific division right now. It seems like those standings are shaking up every day more than the central division. But I mean, it's not too far out of the question to say that the stars could potentially find themselves in the top three in the division. Don't know if that's how the season will end just because of the talent we've seen from these other teams, but it's at least an option, which a few weeks ago, I don't think I would have believed you or many other stars fans uh, would have believed anyone presenting that news. And a lot of the stars success now and then being in the playoffs uh, if the season ended today has to do with some of how some of the games unfolded yesterday afternoon and evening. The Islanders did beat the Ducks and the Carolina Hurricanes did beat the Oilers. So that's a big reason why their point total stayed the same and why they are not above the stars in the standings right now. And on Monday, the Dallas Stars need a few things to happen. Only three games happening on Monday. Uh, but if two games go, you know, or the right way, it helps the Dallas Stars somewhat. It won't move them any higher up in the standings, but it does, you know, create a little bit more separation. At least one of them does. They need the New Jersey Devils to beat the Vancouver Canucks to keep the Canucks from continuing to climb the ranks because then that's a third Pacific Division team that would be on the heels of the Dallas Stars. And then if the Boston Bruins could beat the LA Kings, that'd be great too because, uh, as I said, the Pacific Division absolutely chaotic right now. And so some of those teams in the top three could drop out and find themselves as a wild card spot. So, I mean, the Eastern Conference, if they beat a Western Conference team, that uh, affects the Stars more. If an Eastern Conference team wins, not going to affect where the Stars stand, but it does add two points to the LA Kings. And I would love the LA Kings to lose on Monday and have a little bit of a negative momentum, if you will, coming into the AAC on Wednesday for what's going to be a massive game 
and what should be an absolute thriller of a game, the grudge match between the Stars and Kings. One and one on the season series so far. Looking to break the tie. Uh, both those teams will be going to be very exciting. Can't wait to preview that one and can't wait to watch that game. Going to be an absolute thriller. But that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked on Stars. Thank you again for making us your first listen of the day. Be sure to subscribe to and follow the Locked on Stars podcast wherever you get your podcast at, whether that's on YouTube or your favorite podcasting platform. We are free and available no matter where you listen or how you listen. Now go make your second listen of the day, the Locked on Fantasy Hockey podcast. The NHL fantasy playoffs are on the horizon pretty soon, and you're going to need all the help you can get to get your lineup set to be in the best shape to win that you can be. So go check out the Locked on Fantasy Hockey podcast every weekday, wherever you get your podcast at. Be sure to tune in tomorrow as we continue to get you prepared for the week ahead in Dallas Stars hockey. Like I said, big game on Wednesday against the Kings and some big division matchups on the road coming up after that. So a big, very, very important stretch for the Stars coming up here over the next few games. But we'll see you tomorrow, Stars fans. Hope you have a fantastic Monday. 